Ahsoka, Season 1, Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called Part 7, Dreams and Madness. Another episode I love. The spoilers for everything Star Wars that has come out so far. And, uh, yeah, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the Sang After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in. So, yeah, we open on the hearing, which is really not going in Hira's favor until 3PO shows up, and we see that Ziono is... Yet another Star Wars character who's anti-droid, which, you know, the audience has, we, right from the start, we've liked the droids, so we're inclined to really dislike people who are against them, and it really does, you know, it's sadly very, very accurate to reality, you know, he's a rich, powerful person, he's even in government, and he has prejudice against, you know, a a chunk of the, the population. So, yeah, really good message for, for young people. Important that they understand it, not, not a positive thing for them to learn. And I like that uh, Ahsoka still trains watching the, the holographic messages that Anakin recorded and you know the the yeah continue to really love seeing Hayden Christensen reclaim the the role make it work which it really didn't in the prequel movies and there's that line uh, you know practice these f often or at least more often than I do you know which yeah that's very much the kind of relationship that he and Ahsoka had. And he mentions that she might run into Asajj Ventress, which it's hard for me to put into words how much I would love to see Asajj Ventress in live action. That would be amazing. So, you know, now she is canon. You know, she's never been mentioned in the, you know, like, she's only been mentioned in the animated stuff until now, and not everything animated has been canonized. And, let's see. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I like Huyang and Ahsoka arguing. Maybe this is why he's so mean to Sabine. He's He takes out his frustration at not being able to win an argument with Ahsoka. Really great action as they hit the minefield. And, you know, the... Um, Morgan comes to... I can't believe I'm blanking on the names. Um... Thrawn with, you know, a small tablet and says, you know, here, here is everything that the, the, Inquisitor, the Inquisitors had on Ahsoka Tano. And he looks at it. This is a crude crayon drawing of Ahsoka Tano and someone wrote, like, a speech bubble that says, I stink. And the yeah, and and you know Ezra has been filled in on what has happened while he was gone, and they have the exchange. The Emperor died. That's what people say. People who aren't J.J. Abrams, at least. I don't hate J.J. Abrams the way that right-leaning Star Wars fans do. But somehow Palpatine returned was not his finest moment. And Ezra teases Sabine over Jedi skill. You know, the you, you are Ahsoka's, you know, Padawan. No, no, I mean, I guess I saw a little bit back when I was training. Was, yeah. And, yeah, 
Ahsoka has to rely on her bond, Jedi bond, with Sabine, and it does work out. Love the cool, creepy effects on Enoch joining the, the hologram. Holographic, yeah. Open fire. And Balin tells Shin to fight without his help. We get more great action. I really like, you know, the, the no tie people. You know, it's not... In, in addition to each of them having the, the shield on their own bodies, you know... The, the 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 shell you know like a it's like a crab shell or turtle shell or something although as far as I can tell it is it's not organic to them they they found a shell and but but yeah um in addition the the you know the their transports also have shell you know because that's how they survive they you know they're they're peaceful some might even say they're defenseless and so it falls to the others to to fight and yeah very cool when ahsoka and balin fight ezra says he does not want a lightsaber or a blaster the force is my ally and a powerful ally it is and since this was made by Americans and there are soldiers in it, of course, we got to have the move, move, move stereotype or trope. And yeah, very cool when the night troopers surround the, the, the duo. And I quite like the, the holographic grid that, you know, with, with, like, um, I forget what that shape is called, but it's not, like, it's not square and it's not circle, uh, you know, it, it kind of reminded me of, like, the, the grid for open combat in, like, Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, you might be able to hear the cars driving by. Apologies. And, yeah, Ahsoka comes in for the rescue. I, I really enjoyed when Shin fought. Yeah, this was not the perfect time because that is garbage pickup. I hope that's not too loud on the mic. Um, yeah, res you know she comes in to rescue the others, and there's some great fights against Shin. And yeah, happy reunion, and they. Yeah, the episode ends. Um, yeah, I thought they did a really great job. The the um, you know there's plot progression, there's important character moments. I'm glad we didn't have to wait an entire episode for the um, the Purgle to arrive. And yeah, um, I guess I could briefly go into let's see I'm actually no yeah I don't really have any theories for the finale that are different from the ones I had last week when I talked about in that episode I I appreciate that again we see Thrawn as this brilliant tactician you know, like he points out, there's no reason to send a bunch of troops to attack because, you know, what does it matter if we abandon them on this world? They're not going to be able to, to get away from here, you know. And um, I think that might... It was, it was fun to see... Uh, C-3PO again I I don't know if it was like yeah he, he was important at least that I really do appreciate it wasn't just oh he's there you know like I'm not gonna claim that I didn't love seeing him in Rogue One but he was just there like he's he's standing there we see him it's fan service and then moves on, you know, he doesn't accomplish anything. So I appreciate that that was the case here. 
and you know the the Hayden Christensen bit felt like you know it's telling us that Ahsoka does you know bring out actually yeah I guess has it maybe been a while she said this was the last recording is this maybe like the Guardians of the Galaxy thing of like this is the last thing that character will ever get from this person that they really cared about yeah I think I think that's basically what we're seeing she made peace with him the, the she made peace with her feelings about him you know he's dead so it's not making pe peace with the person itself himself um you know yeah in the in the world between worlds she made peace with her her memory uh, of of him and her feelings about the the legacy which of course Balin very tautly you know stirred up so yeah this was her you know bringing out the the last one and I do think it is noteworthy she didn't throw them out so on some level she wanted to heal you know she's just not quite been able to before meeting Anakin or the you know we st we never really got quite confirmation if this if it's like the ghost or if it's her idea of meeting him again or what exactly but yeah because regardless you know on on rebels it there there wasn't really the option of meeting people who had already died you could see the time before they died but not meet them after they died yeah <clears throat> i think that is but but yeah you know so yeah that shows character growth and yeah hayden really nails it and it felt like you know the the kind of dynamic they would have on the show it felt more like that Anakin than movie Anakin, which, you know, I'm one of many to say that show Anakin was better, a more likable character. You could better understand why people would rally around him, <clears throat> why Pat May fell in love with him, why Obi-Wan kept fighting alongside him. And yeah, that is it for this one. So yeah, really excited to see the finale. And I really appreciate that yet again, you know, yeah, with the no tie, yet again, Star Wars is not about, you know, oh, these, you know, civilians, they're so pathetic, which some American, you know, some other American media, American conservative media is what I was, yeah. And the, the, let's see, yeah, you know, they are, they are to be protected. And you get the sense, like, yeah, you know, every, you know, sometimes they're not able to move between, you know, the nomadic thing often enough so they get attacked. And what they'll do is just wait out the attack. Which obviously you can't do when the attackers have lightsabers. You know, they're just going to cut right through the shell. Which, you know, means our heroes can have a hero moment. And, yeah, you know, the detail that Thrawn pulls back his forces, basically abandoning Shin, which we already knew that he was perfectly willing to do. But actually seeing it, you know, and now Shin knows. I think that... Right, right. Really loved uh, Ezra fighting without weapons. Just using telekinetic, you know, th throwing people away and a little bit of martial arts. It did feel a little weird when, you know, after dodging the first saber attack from Shin, where she only managed to cut a hair really appreciate the detail that we see like the you know the both both the part of his hair that's still on his head and the the part that she cut off we see this little I guess what do y'all call that like a like a spark kind of you know it's it's lit on fire because the lightsaber is intensely hot you know it doesn't look the way that 
it would if you used a real life sword, which is just metal, to cut a uh, hair off. But but uh, yeah, you know, so he dodges this first attack and then he attacks her and she like easily gets rid of I, I mean I guess maybe you know obviously in part it's because they wanted the writer wanted the you know Dave Filoni who wrote the episode wanted there to be a fight another fight between Shin and Sabine I, I guess the reasoning is that it's been a long time since Ezra used force powers against someone else who had like force powers for sensitivity you know he hasn't been able to do that in all the time he's been in this other system so yeah I think that's gonna be it yeah I, I like that Hu Yang in you know at the start of this episode is still like you realize we don't even know if the Purgle took us to the right you know the right planet let alone the right system and Ahsoka is just 100 percent yeah, that was, I like that. And I think that might, right, and the detail that, you know, the the Eye of Scion, you know, reveals, you know, when, when they spot that, they know that they're in the right place. And, yeah, the, the callback of hiding among some some asteroids and such we've seen that before in Star Wars live action and that is it for this one yeah so until next week it is kind of wild that Sabine became a Padawan that's Ezra could have been more like diplomatic in pointing that out, but then then he wouldn't be Ezra. <laughs>